Hi there, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We'll um, let everyone get onto the webinar um, just before we get started. But um, do feel free to say who you are in the um, in the chat box. Nice to see lots of familiar names there. Kathy, Judy, hi Dale. Hi Alan, hi Hugh, David, hi Val, hi Jenny. And hello to Maggie, lots of people, excellent. Hi, John. Hi, Roz, Andy, and Dan. Yeah, oh, it's excellent. Yeah, got some, uh, lots of people. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. So I think we'll go ahead and get started. I think most people have managed to um to jump on, and there's quite a lot, lot to get, to have a look at to um tonight. So um good evening, and uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, my name is Zoe, and I'm the marketing coordinator at the Low Carbon Hub. Um, if you've joined us before, um, then welcome back. If not. Uh, thanks for coming and uh, joining us on our 2021 webinar series. This is our second webinar of the series. Two weeks ago, we did a bit of an intro to the hub. And uh, if you missed that or want to catch up with anything there, that is on our YouTube channel. And uh, this one will also be on our YouTube channel um, a bit later on. And uh, I'll send around the link to all, um, all the participants and who've joined us tonight. Um, so that is something just to be aware of if you do um, come off uh, mute any time that it will be recorded. Um, so yes, uh, we're going to, we've got a really good panel of people, um, everyone from the hub, and um, we're going to go through, I'll do some introductions, and um, I think we're going to do, everyone's going to do their own presentation and speak, and we'll leave some time for questions at the end. So um, if you do have any questions, do put them in the chat and we'll do our best to get through um, as many as possible at the end after everyone's done their presentations. Um, all right, so first off, we've got James Ockeltree, who is project manager at the Low Carbon Hub. And I think James is one of the people who's been at the Hub longest, or at least involved amongst, he started out as an intern. Um, and uh, yes, so James, project manager, does a lot of work with schools and businesses with solar, solar projects and solar PV. We've got Harry Orchard, who's our asset manager. And Harry is the go-to person for everything technical. And, um, and he does a lot of stuff with uh, Sanford Hydro specifically, but also our solar installations and doing a lot of work on Project Leo at the moment. Uh, Tabitha Whiting is marketing manager for ESOX and Cozy Homes, Oxfordshire. So she is um, involved in those two programs specifically and uh, powering down section and does all sort of the marketing elements of that. So if you've seen anything sort of website, social media, slightly that's that's where Tabitha's got her input there. And um, next up, Alison, Alison Grunewald. She's our business relationship manager at Ox Futures and is also heavily involved in ESOCs, but she's going to be speaking about Ox Futures tonight. Um, and Alison's amazing and runs <laughs> so much. And I work with Alison specifically on Ox Futures and it is great to see all the work that's been going on there and how much um, how much work is, is being done in on energy efficiency in businesses in Oxfordshire. And finally, it's Richard. Richard Dory, one of the newest members at the Low Carbon Hub. And um, Richard is also uh, working on our newest programme, uh, ESOX, Energy Solutions Oxfordshire. Um, and we're really excited to um, introduce that to anybody if you haven't heard of um, heard of that yet or don't know much about it. Um, I'm really excited for um, Richard to tell you all about that. So let's let's get started, shall we? So for those that don't know, Low Carbon Hub is a social enterprise. It's out to prove we can meet our energy needs in a way that's good for people and good for the planet. If you do want to know more about how the hub works, how it sort of came to be, sort of 
bit more about the vision and impact so far, um, as well as our current share offer, I really do recommend going back to and um, have a look at the webinar that we did uh, two weeks ago, um, because that's a really good intro for, um, with our CEO, Dr. Barbara Hammond, and uh, our social impact director, Saskia Huggins. They give a really good sort of breakdown of how, um, how the hub came to be and everything there. Um, let's see. So this is just a bit of a, an insight into what we do. Um, so we have three strands to achieve, achieve our mission, powering up, which is developing community and renewable energy generation projects. As I mentioned before, sort of, uh, Sanford Hydro was one of our big ones, as well as solar and solar projects on businesses and schools and working with communities. Powering down, working on reducing energy demand and use, um, and that's energy efficiency, both domestic and with businesses. And innovation, catalyzing system change and developing a smarter, more flexible, low carbon energy system for the future. Um, and largely at the moment, that is um, sort of our involvement in Project Leo, which we did a webinar series on last year, um, last summer, uh, again on our YouTube channel, if you did miss that and want to catch up with that. And it's going to be uh, featured again in our next webinar in two weeks time, where we'll have Barbara and our Innovation Director Adriano talking a bit more about where we're up to at the moment with Project Leo, giving us a bit of an update on that. Um, and that's going to be really exciting. So um, we'll pop the link in that for the next one uh, in the chat, just so you have the chance to sign up there. So tonight we're going to be talking about the first two of these strands. And so the first one, powering up. So how can we make more of our energy uh, in a greener way and continue using it? So here we go, James, I'll pass it over to you. Hello, yes, um, yeah, fantastic uh, image there of, of Didcot Power Station, although I imagine most of those towers aren't there anymore. Um, but yeah, fantastic, thanks. So, so yeah, everyone, uh, I'm James, I'm the project manager at Low Carbon Hub. Um, I'm yeah, here to kind of talk uh, about kind of mostly how we power up. Um, I have a privilege to work along a lot of projects uh, across the hub, um, but the one I've been working on uh, longest, as Zoe alluded to, has been our, our solar schemes. And I would argue that um, is, uh, for lack of a better term, the kind of bread and butter uh, that we use at the Low Carbon Hub and what we've been doing for the longest to kind of help power up. And that has been, uh, next slide, please, Zoe, if that's all right. Um, oh, the next one, sorry. I'm sorry, I, I didn't want to have that, that many. There we go. Um, and that has been absolutely to do as the slide uh, suggests and to create uh, and manage and help proliferate community owned renewable energy across the county uh, as best and possible. And we've done this in a number of ways. Again, we work along a number of projects, but certainly the primary way uh, in which we've been doing this has been, uh, as the slide alludes to again, um, is working with host organizations to help uh, install uh, um, roof mounted solar PV. Uh, and through the help of our wonderful investors, we've been able to uh, do a lot of that uh, over the nearly 10 years now that we've been uh, owning and operating solar PV arrays. We've also worked with communities previously, uh, initially entering Green Tea, for example, on a number of small scale um, uh, solar projects. Uh, and most recently, of course, uh, with Sanford and Kennington uh, and Sanford Hydro as well. So many ways we look to power up uh, and engage, but hopefully we can allude to a little bit more what that solar B PV process uh, entails, what that bread and butter process entails, uh, and give you an idea of, of where we're going with that moving forward. So next slide, please, Zoe. Um, so in terms of, of, of where we are and where we're going, um, as you can see, again, we've been at this for a while, uh, but uh, yeah, and we've also been you know, improving as we go. So uh, our first project there, Oxford Bus Company in 2015, uh, 130 kilowatt peak uh, roof mounted solar PV uh, and been increasing uh, our uh, generation and of course our uh, capacity to generate uh, exponentially and increasingly exponentially over, over those set of years. Um, so big milestone jumps there. For example, 2016, we see two large roofs in Banbury and ProDrive and CPG uh, get set up. So you know, nearly, uh, nearly two megawatts of capacity there now. Uh, and then the following year, Sanford Hydro, again, creating another big jump uh, in generation capacity and subsequent uh, generation moving forward. And we hope to see that growth moving forward uh, as best we can, uh, despite of a maybe rocky uh, subsidy scan for landscape that has been and potentially will be moving forward. So next slide, please, Zoe. Um, so in regards to that kind of um, bread and butter PV model, then how does that all work? Uh, essentially, uh, we are aiming to set up uh, a power station uh, on the roofs of our hosts uh, that can provide them directly with electricity. Um, 
it's as simple as that. Uh, but the hub, uh, again, through the work of our investors and their support, uh, is able to fund these projects. We can procure them, project management, and then eventually own and operate them for the entire lifetime of the project. Um, we uh, are able to do this namely through the use of, uh, of a roof lease um, that we hold with the host organization or the owner of the building. Um, we hold that uh, airspace lease for generally a period of around 20 to 25 years. Uh, and again, this can be with school, businesses, community groups, uh, as long as we are engaging with the owner of that organization, uh, owner of the, of the structure, um, we are able to move forward with that. Um, we are then able to actually generate solar, solar electricity on the roof uh, and feed that directly uh, to the host or the occupier of the building um, and sell that to them for a predetermined rate. Um, this model and the rate naturally varies depending on size of projects and a whole number of other factors. Uh, but this namely is coming now for us in the form of, of an index PPA or power purchase agreement. Um, and then any additional electricity, uh, say on a very sunny uh, August afternoon or August bank holiday when we're producing our maximum of that electricity, uh, but no one's in school, no one's in a business, um, and so we are providing the full uh, full power requirements for that structure. Uh, anything left over is then uh, sold out onto the national grid uh, via a supplier and also an additional PPA there. So it's through those revenue streams um, that we are able to uh, to uh, to fund the project. We're able to uh, produce our community benefits, um, which you know we reinvested into into our communities uh, in a number of fantastic ways. I would refer you to our SID team, our social impact reports. Um, I'm sure there'll be more webinars on that, and I'm sure Barbara uh, and Saskia alluded to the great work that we did with that uh, previously on the other webinar. Um, but also that is there or, uh, to repay investors who were able to make the project happen in the first place uh, with a fair return over the lifetime of the project. So next slide, please, Zoe. So yeah, as mentioned, um, we've had the privilege uh, thus far to work uh, with 39 organizations, tantalizingly close to 40. So we hope to bump that number up uh, sooner rather than later. Um, but this has been from small village primary schools to, as I mentioned previously, megawatt industrial state uh, roofs uh, and, and, and large uh, hydro organizations as well. So absolutely great to be working with that many organizations and may that continue. So to give a flavor, and if we can go on to the next slide, please, Zoe. Of kind of who we work with. So this is uh, Thames Travel. Um, they are a, a bus company based out of Didcot. Um, I mentioned Oxford Bus Company previously as our first rooftop business solar PV project. Thames Travel uh, is a sister organization of Oxford Bus. So it's great to be working with them again um, and to see that relationship continue moving forward. Um, some fantastic stats there, 14% of, yeah, 14 homes typical uh, amount of power that equates to an, on average or in the higher end of average about 33% of their demand on site. So it's great to be able to produce a significant amount of their uh, electricity needs uh, with community owned renewable uh, energy. Um, this is also our first Project LEO project from the year one uh, list of projects that we got forward with. Um, and I'm sure you'll be getting to hear more about Project LEO uh, later on. Um, and also the image on the right hand side there uh, is not a stock image um, that's a fantastic uh, picture from uh, Harry, uh, who will be talking in just a second, um, and you can see it's a change from the norm of our usual gloomy pictures of solar PV so long may that uh, pho uh, photographing uh, trend continue moving forwards. Um, so yeah, uh, work the number of businesses, this is one of the examples and then moving on to the next slide. Uh, the, the, the vast majority of organisations that we have worked with uh, have been schools. Um, 31 schools in Oxfordshire, one of those slightly just across the border into Bucks, but you know, it's the same as we go. Um, and we've worked from uh, state schools, OCC maintained, uh, academy trusts, uh, independent schools uh, across the board there. Um, so yeah, some fantastic stats there, but you know, don't be to they move you over to those again, gray and gloomy pictures, which hopefully will be continuing to change moving forward. Um, the bottom school there is Lark Christ Primary. I think that was installed uh, 2013, 2014, and that was our first school project. Um, it's great to see that the work uh, and investment and time they helped put in to get that project uh, working and the model they helped to solidify is then proliferated out across all of those schools and, and hopefully to continue on and do so further. Um, and those figures are absolutely fantastic, you know, very proud of those and will continue to be proud of those, but the work doesn't stop there beyond those kind of those quantifiable numbers, you know, we work alongside these schools in initially once the, uh, the array is installed to look at um, you know, assemblies and workshops we can do to help the student translate the new panels on the roof into what they actually do and why it's important they're there and um, to the students. 
continue to provide support in talks and green weeks to you know continue uh, helping where we can uh, and also providing data and monitoring from our back end systems to help science teachers show you know a solar eclipse or the impacts of snow and really help to provide a tangible link and can translate that um, that that kind of community energy uh, feel into what's going on on the ground at the school but also it you know helps create the social norm you know all these students go to schools that have panels on the roof and that's normal for them and they proliferate that norm of decentralized green renewable community owned energy to their wider communities and hopefully uh, across the county as we go so uh, i won't prattle on anymore um and as mentioned we work on lots of projects uh, outside solar pv as well and harry is about to give you a flavor uh, of those now thank you very much james right hi everyone uh I'm Harry Orchard and I'm the operations manager at Low Carbon Hub. So as has already been said, I look after all of our assets. So all of the solar PV that James has been talking about. We also have a newly installed battery at Rose Hill Primary School in Oxford and uh, obviously with Hydro. Uh, Santos Hydro is the largest community owned hydroelectric power station on the River Thames. It was commissioned in late 2017 and then became fully operational in 2018 in February. And as is fairly obvious, it uses the power of the river to generate clean electricity. And this is quite simple, but technically quite simple. Um, it's literally using the flow of the water through the River Thames to turn a turbine, uh, turn a screw, which in turn turns a turbine to generate some electricity. Uh, you can see a picture on the right there of uh, some people standing on one of the walkways, and obviously the screws are quite big. But the next slide will kind of show it in better detail. Yeah, the next slide, please. So yes, you can see on the top right, these screws are pretty massive. Uh, so Stafford Hydro has a 440 kilowatts of installed capacity. And to put that in a bit of context, um, so the average power of your kettle in your kitchen is about two to three kilowatts. So we can power about 170 or so kettles at any one time at, when we're at max capacity. And depending on the river conditions, on average, over a given year, we'd expect to generate about 1.6 gigawatt hours of energy, which is about 1.6 million kilowatt hours. And this amount of energy is approximately the same as the typical household consumption for 400 households over a year. It means that we can save on average two tons of CO2 every day. So we can get over 700 tons of CO2 saved a year. As with all of our uh, installations. Uh, Santa Hydro was installed with a Vara community share offer and 1.5 million were raised, uh, a lot of it through local investment as well, which was great to see. Santa Hydro is, uh, as I've said, been fully operational for almost two years now and we're using it as part of our work in Project Leo, which I'm quite closely involved in. Uh, Project Leo, for those who don't know, is uh, Project Local Energy Oxfordshire, what Leo stands for. And it's an Oxfordshire-based project looking at forming smart local energy systems using local renewable energy storage and uh, renewable energy storage and demand assets. And one of the many things we're looking at is moving energy through time, which is just one of the very many things that Project Leo is looking at. So as an example, it might be moving generation from during the middle of the day when it's not really much use, moving it to the evening peak when people come home from work and start cooking dinner. So what we've been looking at with Stanford Hydro is how we can raise the river level slightly and use the river as a form of battery. So we might slow down the screws at a particular time during the day, raise the river level upstream just a little bit, and over time this accumulates quite a bit of, quite a volume of water for just a small raising river level. And then at a later time we can speed the screws up to above what they would have been otherwise and create a much larger power increase at a time when it's needed. So this is just one of the many things we're trying with Sanford Hydro and the vast majority of our other assets as well. Um, and if you want to learn a bit more about Project Leo, as Zoe has already said, we've got a webinar coming up on February the 9th and you can learn more about it. Uh, can I have the next slide, please, Zoe? Uh, now I'm gonna quickly talk about Ray Valley Solar, which is our upcoming solar park project. Um, this is hopefully gonna be commissioned later on this year. And there's currently a share offer for it, which is open right now. Ray Valley Solar will be a 19 megawatt capacity project, which is a, if you paid attention to the numbers on the previous slides is massive compared to everything else we own. It's uh, much, much, much bigger than uh, 
of the pipe at least, uh, generating over 18 gigawatt hours of energy a year, which is about 10 times more than standard hydro can generate in a given year. The project can last for over 40 years, generating, uh, sorry, saving us 4,200 tons of CO2 every year on average. And as, as I said, uh, share off on right now, we're already doing exceptionally well. Have already passed our 1.5 million pound target and are well past 2 million as well. So you can go to our website, uh, lowcarbonhub.org slash invest to uh, find out more information on that. And also there is another upcoming webinar on March the 2nd, where our business development director, Tom Heal, who's been instrumental in putting together this project, will be talking a bit more about Ray Valley Solar and ground mount solar in general in Oxfordshire. And I'll pass back to Zoe. That's great. Thank you so much, Harry and James. That was a really good and concise story. It's hard to fit it all in, but um, you did a really good job. So thank you very much. And we can now move on to the powering down section, take a look at a few of our programmes that are more focused on working on reducing energy demand um, and usage and doing it in a more energy efficient way. And then um, to start with, I'll pass you over to Tabitha Whiting, who's going to talk about Cozy Homes Oxfordshire. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tabitha, I'm Marketing Manager at the Low Carbon Hub, and I'm responsible for two of our Powering Down programmes, um, which is Cozy Homes Oxfordshire and Energy Solutions Oxfordshire. Um, so moving away from all those brilliant renewable energy projects that James and Harry have told you about and onto the kind of energy demand reduction, how do we reduce energy demand in the first place? Um, so this evening I'm going to tell you about Cozy Homes Oxfordshire, which is a programme focused on domestic energy efficiency improvements, so that is reducing energy demand in the home. Um, so next slide, please, Zoe. So to start with just a little bit of context, um, if we're going to hit our 2050 climate targets in the UK, we would need to retrofit 29 million homes, which is the equivalent or was at the time this stat was produced of 1.8 homes every single minute. And that's obviously a massive number. Um, and it comes down to the fact that our housing stock is old, it's inefficient, and that means that a lot of the energy that we use in the home is wasted due to issues like single glazed windows, uninsulated walls, um, both of which allow heat to escape or inefficient fossil fuel boilers um, and more often it's a combination of all of those three things and many more. Um, so as you can tell there's, there's quite a big task to be done there in terms of reducing energy demand in the home. So next slide please. So the solution is retrofit, making energy efficiency improvements to the home and you can kind of see this before and after picture there's some of the measures that you might um, come across when we're thinking about energy efficiency in buildings um, and research has found that the best method of retrofit is, is the whole house approach um, wherein a house is assessed and recommendations are made on that house as a whole structure and that's because as I've just said most homes will require multiple measures and when we renovate homes in a piecemeal way or what we might call a single measure is installed um, without necessarily considering how that would fit together in the house as a whole you often have more issues forming in the long run. So take, for instance, if you have an open chimney, that would probably cause quite a lot of heat loss. Um, so you might decide to brick that up to block the hole, but then you might find that that causes damp on the walls around it because you haven't considered ventilation when closing up that chimney. Um, so it's really important to look at a house as a cohesive whole. Um, and then alongside that, we're also all about carbon impacts at the hub and at Cozy Homes. And that whole house retrofit approach enables us to bring a house down to the lowest possible carbon emissions from energy use in one go, although that could be over several phases of work. So Cozy Homes was essentially born out of that need, um, and it's a not-for-profit, one-stop home retrofit service, which uses that whole house approach to bring homes as close to net zero carbon emissions as possible, whilst also reducing energy bills and increasing comfort for the residents. So when you work with Cozy Homes, um, the, the, the process always starts with the home assessment and whole house plan to ensure that we have that whole house picture and give the right recommendations for every home. And then if you choose to go ahead, we'll manage the whole process for you, which includes finding trusted local contractors, working with our delivery team, um, project managing the delivery and then checking quality and monitoring at the end of the install as well. And at the moment, Cozy Homes is still in its pilot phase. So I saw a question in the chat before about how long it's been running. So we've been going um, for nearly two years, so two years in March, um, and that's under grant funding by the Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. And we're run by three project partners at the moment, which is us, the Low Carbon Hub, um, Retrofit Works, who are the scheme's delivery partner, and the National Energy Foundation. 
And this pilot phase ends in March, that funding from the government, but we will be continuing the service um, supported by the three project partners. And then next slide, Zoe. So just quickly moving on to a case study of what's possible through the service. So these photos are from um, a project we recently worked on with an East Oxford family on their end of terrace home. They had bought the home as a bit of a project. They'd already done an extension on it. So they had I think this house from the 1880s. So they had parts of the home that were quite old and then parts of the home that were really modern and well insulated, airtight, all of that nice stuff. And then the older parts that were quite cold and drafty. Um, so they, they wanted to make sure every room in the home was comfortable and they also, um, the one of them is an energy researcher, so they were kind of motivated by environmental impact as well and making sure um, that they were doing their bit at home as well. So they installed an air source heat pump um, to replace their gas boiler, which is a low carbon heating option, but it's much less intensive, so they do need the property to be kind of well insulated and airtight to be as effective as possible. So we worked with them on that, which included installing wood fibre internal wall insulation, which you can see um, on the top row of photos being installed. And that included that bay window, which was um, completely uninsulated before, which is often the case. Um, and we also replaced windows with triple glazing, especially some of the older sash windows, uh, and replaced the front door as well. And they've it was done pretty recently, but they've noticed a massive difference in terms of warmth in the home already, as well as a 60% reduction in their energy bills, which obviously translates into massively reduced carbon emissions. Uh, we do have, there's a few more case studies on the Cozy Homes website if you, if you wanted to have a look at some of our different projects, different house types, that kind of thing. Um, so quickly, finally, just to explain what you would need to do if you're interested in working with us to retrofit your home. So you can head to the Cozy Homes website and click on the register page, which takes you to a survey to give us some initial information on your home. At the moment, we do have a waiting list um, for new registrations, which is due to quite high demand we've been experiencing since the launch of the Green Homes Grant. Uh, so it's currently taking about 12 weeks from registering your home to having a whole house plan delivered. But, slide, next slide, please, Zoe. <laughs> we do now have a free plan builder available, which again, you can find on our website. I'll pop the link to that in the chat in a second. Um, and this is an online tool, which allows you to put in your postcode and see what the current energy profile of your home is based on existing data and get some kind of initial recommendations of the measures that might make sense for you. Um, and then you build a plan as you can kind of see on this screenshot um, based on your budget and the measures that are recommended. Uh, so it's just a really good way to get an initial idea of what's possible, the likely cost involved and whether it's something you might want to go ahead with. Um, and if that is the case, you can then submit your plan through the plan builder to our team to pick up um, and then we'll follow up with you on how to get that moving forward. So yeah, I'd really recommend that as a starting point if you're interested in home retrofit and what might be possible for your home. And then last slide, please, Zoe. So this last slide just has, has the website on it, has some ways you can stay connected with us if you are interested in retrofit yourself or if you're interested in kind of how the prog project progresses. Um, and that's it from me on the tour of Cozy Homes, but happy to answer any questions at the end. And uh, I'm passing on to Alison to do Ox Futures. Hi, um, so I'm Alison Grunewald. I'm the Hub's Business Relationships Manager and I've um, been working on Ox Futures. It was a project uh, established in 2017. It's a £4.2 million project funded by the European Regional Development Fund and its um, aim is to grow Ox Futures low carbon economy and it's got three strands of activities, but I'm just going to look at the side that is um, stimulating innovation and energy improvements. It's like many of the hub projects, it's an extremely collaborative project. Um, it's involved our two world-class um, universities, the City Council, Chirrell District Council, so Dale, who's here part of this webinar, um, has been a really important part of this project. So um, thanks for coming, Dale. Um, and also Bioregional, that's um, an environmental consultancy. Um, so Zoe, next slide, please. So just to give you an example of um, uh, essentially uh, what happens is a business organization or social enterprise or charity can apply to us for a free energy audit. And then 
the recommendations, we can provide a grant to cover 25% of the cost of um, installing the measure um, and the sort of capital cost of um, whatever equipment is needed. And um, in the bottom left hand um, corner, quite a few of our businesses have done the sort of important work of upgrading their heating and their lighting. So this particular business um, is an accountancy firm called Chapman, Robinson and Moore, and they replaced um, old night storage heating that was poorly controlled with air source heat pumps. There have been other businesses that have done some sort of really quite innovative energy efficiency improvements. So in the um, top left hand corner is um, a, a company called Peterson's Fine Furniture that has a workshop and they've um, installed a biomass wood burner that is turning their waste wood offcuts into heating for the workshops. So that was a, a sort of win-win, they're reducing their waste and producing heat. Um, in the top right, Folly Restaurant, which is on Folly Bridge um, here in Oxford, they have installed an electric induction oven in a commercial kitchen, which as far as we know of, um, it, it, there aren't many, there's plenty of induction ovens in private domestic settings, but this is really quite um, rare to put an induction oven in a commercial kitchen. And one of the reasons is it's a tiny galley kitchen and they had horrendous problems with the, the heat levels in that kitchen you know their staff were in terrible working conditions and then they needed a huge amount of extraction which was also energy intensive so it's a sort of win-win both in terms of comfort and energy savings and then the bottom um, picture on the right hand side is Serafina which is um, a passenger um, boat, which they converted, the business has converted from diesel to an electric motor, and it's the largest electric passenger boat on the River Thames at the moment. Um, and actually, they operate the service again from Folly Bridge, um, so that once lockdown is over, that that will be gently plying up and down Christchurch Meadows. Um, next slide, please, Zoe. So just in terms of, you know, the scale of what we've been doing in the last three and a half years, um, there's been 146 energy audits carried out um, and nearly a thousand recommendations made. But clearly, if that just stays on a piece of paper, it's no good to man or beast. Um, so we've been following up with research to find out actually how many of these measures are implemented and the brilliant news is that about a third of those measures have been implemented quite a lot of the measures that are suggested in these reports are actually low cost or no cost they're sort of behavioral change or you know improve your settings you know quite often people have got heating running when it really isn't needed you know it might be you know, for far more hours than people are occupying the building. So um, some of the changes can be made very rapidly. Um, and it's just a question of someone, you know, the, there may be no one in a business who's been allocated responsibility for energy because they're, you know, sort of small and medium sized businesses. So it's only when they've got an expert who comes in and looks at energy in the round that these things are spotted. So the potential savings from um, all these energy audits are potentially 4 million kilowatt hour. Um, and about um, one in five of the businesses have come to us for grant funding to help them implement measures. Next slide, Zoe. So um, what next for business? <clears throat> We've been, because we've been so successful in the first three years of this um, project, we've had another three year extension. So we've got support for businesses and charities and social enterprises until December of 2022. And um, 
we've got grants of up to £10,000 available to cover a quarter of the project costs. Um, but they all businesses have to have an energy audit beforehand. Um, so um, essentially, the, this um, is a good scheme for simple projects for small organisations. But for, particularly for larger organisations with large numbers of staff, um, or those organisations who haven't got capital or maybe the time available to project manage them, we've got another offer called ESOX. And I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Richard, who's going to tell you all about that. Thank you, Alison. Um, and I'm going to cheat at the beginning of my presentation. Uh, I'm going to play you a video that was put together by Tabitha and the team um, to explain what Energy Solutions Oxford is all about. Energy efficiency is good business. Reducing running costs makes sense and reductions in carbon emissions shows environmental awareness. It's a no-brainer, right? Smart ways to implement energy efficiency are out there, but lots of organizations aren't making the most of it because getting started isn't always easy. From insulation and draft proofing to installing renewable energy systems, how does a business know what will work for them? And then there's the other stuff. Who will do the work? Will it disrupt the business? How much will it cost? And what can we save? Lots of businesses are asking these questions, so we decided to find the answers. Energy Solutions Oxfordshire is a complete energy efficiency service that works with any organisation and we handle everything for you. It all starts with a free online assessment to establish your energy footprint. If you choose to go further, we'll visit you on site to assess your energy consumption and report back with bespoke recommendations. We'll also find suitable expert contractors to deliver the highest quality service and installations. And once we've approved the work, we'll continue to check in for 12 months. If upfront costs are a problem, we can offer financing opportunities. All this means that you can get on with running your business while we take care of lowering carbon emissions saving you time and money. See, it's a no-brainer. Get the best of both worlds with Energy Solutions Oxfordshire. Um, so thank you for putting that together, Tabitha. Um, it's a great short video to explain what we do and it's available on YouTube for anybody that wants to pick it up and share it with anybody else um, that they feel would warrant using ESOX as we call it for short. Um, so as, as, as it said in the video, um, we are a complete energy efficiency service to help uh, reduce the energy that um, SMEs and larger organizations across Oxfordshire use. Um, but we also do powering up, so we do powering down and powering up. So where it's relevant and useful to the business, we will also suggest some of the energy generation solutions that you've heard of earlier in the presentations today. So next slide, please, Zoe. So essentially, you know, why get involved, as it says here, it you know, really helps SMEs work towards getting to net zero and helping with climate change, as I say, it saves money. Um, it also helps to change their mindset from one where energy is a cost to one where energy can also generate revenue for them if they are generating power locally. Um, and also helps their business to become part of an innovation culture uh, and, and better places to work, as it says there. And it's important that we help SMEs move forwards in terms of their culture. And we've got a number of projects that we're working on where people really are trying to pioneer what they're doing within their organizations. And it's great to see that happening. Next slide, please. So um, basically what we're doing over the last 10 months since the project kicked off, um, we are really in that pipeline building phase of our, of our business. As I said, we've got a number of projects. We're nearly at 20 that we're working on uh, actively at the moment uh, with a lot more leads coming in the pipeline behind that. But really, 
we want more businesses to come and talk to us. Um, a lot of what we're doing from now until the end of June this year is free of charge as we're government funded. Um, so uh, as the video said, it's a bit of a no brainer right now to work with us to get a free energy audit and to understand what can be done to make the buildings that people are working in far, far nicer to work in. Um, so if part of you, the group that's listening are community groups and obviously any help you can offer to contact SMEs in your areas, then please do pass on our information to them. Uh, we're also looking for contractors to help us out as well. So again, we'd like to work with local contractors on the project. So if you know of anyone who would like to join, join with us, then please do let us know. Next slide, please. We also have launched um, an award system um, calling being an energy pioneer um, and people can join us and work with towards becoming an energy pioneer um, and getting the award and there are various uh, levels of that um, and it's now been launched and that can be found on our website uh, we also have a booklet we can send out to explain people what that's all about but clearly it can be used as part of a company's marketing campaign um, and working with their supply chain to try and encourage more and more people to become energy efficient in what they do. And we had a, lo a long conversation today with a potential project we're working on, you know, where they are actively working with their supply chain to get them to reduce their energy usage, how they source their products and, you know, basically reduce the, the carbon footprint of the energy of the company as a whole. Next slide, please. Um, so there are various ways to contact us um, in this world of social media. We've got, you know, um, Twitter and uh, the website and so on, um, but also on LinkedIn and Tabitha posts a lot about us on LinkedIn. Um, so if you see us there on LinkedIn, do do, do like or make comments because it does help spread the word. Uh, and any contact with ESOCs is not a wasted contact because often I pass opportunities on to other members of the team that you've heard present tonight, whether it's you know, James for solar panels and so on, on businesses, and we just cross-reference across the hubs projects. And the final slide, I think. <clears throat> so, you know, this is my call to arms for anyone out there who can help us, who knows any businesses out there that they think would benefit from what we're doing. Um, please point them in our direction and we'd be love, you know, we'd love to talk to them and to see how we can help them out. So thank you for your time. Uh, and I look forward to any questions that people have got to ask. Um, and I'll let Zoe take over. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of our speakers. That was um, that was excellent. And thank you everyone for joining us. There's just the invest link if you are interested in knowing a bit more about the share offer. Now, um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen just so I can see the chat properly, because um, otherwise I can't see all the questions. I know Quite a few of the questions I think have been answered in the chat by our wonderful panelists. Um, but I did see a question early on about, um, which I don't know if it's been answered, from John. Uh, John Brewer saying, when can all the roofs of the massive warehouses around Vista have solar PV installed? And can low carbon hub work with planning officers to have solar PV incorporated into new warehouses and other employment applications at the planning stage? James, is that something you'd like to... Um, Oh, I, I, I try. Don't know whether I can. That's that. That's that's the the, the true answer and the right one. Um, ab absolutely. Uh, the the more uh, w w I think with the objective for any part of the powering up of any of the strands of low carbon hub work you just heard is to get as much uh, renewable generation onto roofs in Oxfordshire as possible. Um, we you know we've worked quite uh, a lot within that Banbury business park, uh, for example. So three of our nine businesses. Uh, are based there and also our three largest as well and we do work um, uh, with, with CBC uh, and other members of that of the community around there who have been instrumental in helping those projects get forward. Um, in terms of working with planning uh, it's something that again we have to we work with local authorities quite closely um, uh, in order to you know continue to, to ensure that we, we're, we're providing a good partnership and working together. Uh, it's something that we are trying to figure out now and mostly in the guise of Project Leo is how we can start to create um, we, the, the, the term we use to some degree is a sandbox, but essentially an open discourse where we can ensure that uh, communities have the tools and abilities to talk to, to planning uh, regulators, whether they be very local in the Paris or whether they be you know whole local authority uh, scale, 
in order for us to you know perpetuate the you know whether it be a heat pump or a megawatt solar pv roof um so it's something we are working on um it's something that we will continue to work on but in terms of maybe directly in terms of that relationship uh that's a bit beyond my scope unfortunately i know barbara has worked with cdc for a long a long long time and so i'm sure there's some relationships there that we have worked on and will continue to foster um but nothing i can provide off the tip of my tongue as of yet my apologies yeah, that's excellent um, and Tabitha, I know I've been seeing a lot of cosy homes questions. I think you've answered um, most of them. But if anyone did have any specific questions about maybe specific pieces of um, sort of equipment like heat pumps, I know were sort of asked about is what's the best thing for them to do? Who should they contact? Um, yeah, good question. Um, so we have, if you go to the Cozy Homes website, which I will put in the chat. So we have, now we have an interactive house, which is really useful. So that has, you can click on different parts of the house and that comes up with all the different measures if you're interested in finding out more about heat pumps or whatever, any other measure. So that's quite useful. Um, so I'll, I'll share a link to that in the chat. And generally we have tons of kind of blogs and stuff. And we also have done um, a series of webinars as Cozy Homes, which gave the kind of one hour overview of cozy homes as well as we had two webinars one that was focused on heat pumps and one on insulation um so they are good if you want to really dive into it and they were with two of our um kind of expert retrofit coordinators so they're good resources and then if there's anything you can't find um then you can always get in touch with us on info at cozyhomesoxford.org and it will get to the right person um so there's one um question here from uh Verbena uh, Hesterman, does Brexit mean the ERDF fund is no longer available for UK low energy schemes? So essentially, um, the ERDF funding will last um, till March 2023. Um, and one of the reasons why we're developing ESOX is because we need um, a sort of post EU funding solution um, to helping businesses with energy efficiency. So um, there will be no more ERDF funding um, in two and a half years time. So we've got this small window and then everyone needs to find some new solutions. So that's why we're getting on with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it was a question here from Nicholas. I think this was during Richard's presentation. Um, I'm on the Cherwell, just over the border in Daventry District, North Ants. Do you stretch that far? Keen to know if we could start something here. Who was that aimed at? Was that aimed at me? I think that was you, Richard. I think it was during your uh, your presentation, the ESOX one. Okay. Um, I'd have to talk to my boss, Alison, about how far we can stretch. Because <laughs> <laughs> as business development, I would say yes, but just need to check whether it's within the bounds, given that James is already stretching outside Oxfordshire. <laughs> um, I think we would discuss on a sort of case by case basis, but it's definitely worth starting those discussions with us. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, we've had quite a lot. There was also this. one other. There was also one other while I'm on um, that I did answer um, to Maggie, but it's worth making um, we making it widely known for those who don't see the chat that we do work with university buildings and colleges. Um, in most mm -hmm. cases, currently they're all SMEs, which is very useful. Um, obviously, universities which are bigger are not SMEs, but after after the end of June, we can work with those going forward. So it's worth starting now because it takes time to get to the point where decisions are made. So the sooner we start that, the better. So thank you for the question. Yes, because ESOX is being um, developed under a Bayes funded project called Boosting Access to SME Energy Efficiency. So um, at the moment, our focus is on SMEs, but come June, we're definitely broadening out and we're quite happy to talk to anyone, um, regardless of whether they're an SME at this point, because we're developing the pipeline post June from now. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, we've got another question here from John saying, have you looked at small wind generators? I saw a farmer using a wind fence generator. Any good? I'm looking at Harry here. I've never heard of a wind fence generator. That sounds amazing. Can't say I have either. <laughs> um, I think um, 
there's an issue with making sort of wind and hydro products that financially viable at the moment. So the reason that we were able to do Sanford Hydro, for example, was that we had feed-in tariff available to us, which is um, sort of a government subsidy to increase the uptake of renewable generation. Unfortunately, that's now ended. Um, so any projects need to be financially viable using additional means, which kind of pushes us slightly towards larger projects like uh, Ray Valley Solar. Um, I'm not I think James would be best place to say what the project cost would be and why we wouldn't be able to go for wind. But um, that's sort of my understanding of it. I think Harry's covered off most of the bases. Uh, partly as well, Oxfordshire has one of the lowest wind resources for renewables in the entire country. Um, so, you know, just the, the, the availability of resource uh, for us is not in, in wind. It just, to a small degree, it is in, in hydro but primarily it's solar PV. It's, you know, it, it, that, that is the way that we're going to be able to achieve um, uh, lo enough low carbon generation along with a smarter, better, more uh, integrated and equitable energy system. That's the, those are the objectives and that's the way to get there. Great, thank you, James and Harry. Um, there are lots, there have been lots of questions answered, I think in the chat, but if you do, if I've missed one, feel, do feel free to uh, post again or, or nudge me. Um, because there's yeah, there's quite a lot to sort through, which is great. It's um, it's wonderful to get so much um, so much engagement, um, and to to hear what what you're all thinking. Um, I just want to give another reminder about our upcoming webinars. We've got one in two weeks' time, uh, on the uh, 9th of February, uh, which is around innovation at the Low Carbon Hub. Which we'll be looking at Project Leo. And two weeks after that, which will be the 2nd of March, we're going to have Tom Heal in our business development director, who's going to give us a, a look, an inside look at how the Ray Valley Solar Project is going. And uh, we'll have a look at how the share offer is going as well. And um, I'm going to send around an email after this webinar with all the links that have been uh, mentioned in the chat, as well as some more info on Ray Valley and how you can invest. Um, oh, we've got a couple more questions coming in there. Um, how do you identify those who are in need of significant retrofits? So it's going to Tabitha and Cozy Homes. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess at the moment where we're at with the program, we don't really identify them. Um, they, I guess, homeowners identify themselves um, at the moment because of the grant funding and because we're developing the service and um, trying to make sure that the model works and all that good stuff um, we can only work with an able to pay market and in the future we'd love to expand that further and do more work and yeah be working on kind of identifying the real needs um, but as it stands we yeah we're working with homeowners who self-identify I guess um, that they need energy improvements or they want to explore home retrofit and they would come to us um, but I guess broadly speaking I think most homes in the UK will benefit from retrofit um i guess your definition of significant might vary um but probably most homes could benefit from something whether it would be worth uh doing a full retrofit would be kind of dependent on you have an assessment and then figure that out but yeah i think most homes could benefit from it i don't know <laughs> hopefully that answers the question <laughs> And um, our colleague Sassy has just raised in the chat a good point sort of within Project Leo, our project partners are also developing tools to help identify housing stocks that are going to most benefit from retrofit. So sort of factoring in, in that into Project Leo. Okay, um, I can't see any more questions coming up immediately. Um, so I'd just like to yeah, take another moment to thank all of our wonderful panellists for joining us this evening. Um, and the presentations, it's been really good, sort of whistle stopped all around a lot of the programmes that the Hub's involved in. Um, and I'd also like to take time to thank all of you for um, sticking with us tonight and um, yeah, fitting us in amongst the many Zooms that I'm sure <laughs> are happening at the moment. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, yeah, I'll send an email around. If you've got any further questions, please do get in touch with either me or one of the panellists. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you. Yep, thanks so much. Well done, team.